Poppy, wake up! Mm. Wake up! No, I'm sleeping. <laughs> mm. Remember, you're supposed to. Do <laughs> Come on, man! You. Poppy, wake up! Wake up! Come on, wake up. Remember, you have to teach the Brian Bulldogs? What? You have to teach the that's, Bulldogs. Oh, that's right. That's right. I get to start teaching the Brian Bulldogs starting now. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. I was missing them so much. Um, Where do I start? Uh, let me start by changing into a little thing, something a little more comfortable. So, I'm going to change Brian Bulldogs, and then we'll get started. Because I forgot, my, my body's been like in non-motion. And remember they say, a body in motion stays in motion. So I need to get used to moving. So I'm going to get used to moving. And you're going to get used to moving again with me. So give me about a minute and then I'll get changed and we'll get started. Bobby, what are you wearing? That's what you wear to fix stuff around the house. What are you? Oh my gosh, I'm so used to being around the house and fixing stuff around here without nothing to do. I got the wrong thing on. It looks like I have a little thing for onesies. So I'm going to change into the right clothes and I'll be right back. Okay, that's the Mr. V I'm used to seeing. Oh yes, I know. I kind of forgot what I was wearing and what I'm supposed to wear because I've been out of work for two weeks already. So, we're ready to go. So, in a minute, I'll be outside and we're going to be learning the first thing for the week. See you in a minute. Hi kids, I'm back. I'm outside now and we're ready to get started with our class. So, in the backboard like you're used to, we're going to be reading about the standards and what the uh, expectation is for this unit that we're going to do this week. All right, so today we're gonna learn about successfully striking with implements. So what is it that we're learning this week? This week is how to successfully strike an object or a ball using a long handled implement, such as a golf club, a bat, a hockey stick, etc. Now, how are you gonna show me through distance learning that you've met the goal for this lesson. First, I'm gonna teach you the concepts and the cues. And then, once I teach you those concepts and we practice and we demonstrate, then you're gonna be able to show me that you can strike a ball toward an intended target successfully three out of five times. If you multiply that by two and you wanna keep going, then it would be six out of 10 times. So in order for you to succeed and show me that you met the goal, you have to be able to demonstrate that, again, three out of five tries or six out of 10 tries. Now, why is this important? The reason this is important is because I know children love to move and do stuff. I love to move and play all kinds of sports. So if I ever wanted to play a sport that involved striking, Striking with implements like hockey, baseball with bats, softball, uh, golf, like with golf clubs. Those are part of being successful and enjoying a variety of sports that involve striking with implements. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to be successful this week striking with a golf club. And I'll try to see if I can get myself a hold of a, of a racket so we can practice striking with rackets as well. So today we're going to start off with striking with the golf clubs. Now today we're going to practice how to do a golf putt. Putting like we did last year, we, we did it once before, uh, is the way that you can, you, when you are close to the hole in golf, you want to putt the ball so that the ball stays on the ground and rolls toward the target or the hole. Now, in order for us to do this today, we have to get creative. So I'll show you how we can get creative in getting some uh, implements or some tools that we can use to practice. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, I don't have a golf club, so 
I'm going to show you a few different ways that we can create some uh, equipment that you can use or make at home so you can practice. The first thing, we're going to go over the, the cues for putting. Now, the first thing is we want to grip with your hands together and your thumbs pointing down. I will show you how to do that in a minute. The second cue is your legs must be looking like the letter A. So legs A, arms Y. Again, I'll show you in a minute what that looks like. The third cue is dot the eye. That would be the bullseye. Our ball today is not gonna have a bullseye, but it just means look at the ball and put your cue, the head of your, uh, of your of your golf club on the ball before you swing it. And the last thing is why putt why. Now, why means backswing. Putt means when you're striking the ball. And the second why means the follow through. So backswing, strike, follow through. It, we call it why putt why because it's easy to remember. Okay? Now, the question for you to think about, and that is going to be your homework, not just demonstrating that you can strike three out of five times, but you need to think a little bit. So your challenge for your first assignment is going to be to email me with this answer. Now, those of you that answer this and make do your best to give me an answer, I'm gonna give you a reward. Now, you're probably thinking, how are you gonna give me a reward if you're at your house and I'm at my house and we're not supposed to be interacting or visiting each other. Well, I'm going to do something around my house that's going to be pretty cool and interesting about my life. Uh, and I'll show you later and uh, that will be your reward. Hopefully most of you will do your best to answer that question. And then I'll show you a video as a reward for doing your best on the question. So the question is, what do you think the first Y does for your swing? Okay. In what way does that help you? Your backswing or the first Y cue? And then the second part of the question is, what does the second Y stand for? So when you do Y, putt, Y, what does the second Y do for your swing in golf? Okay, all right. Okay, so you're probably wondering, what am I going to use if I don't have any golf clubs? Well, luckily, Mr. V got lucky and I had some golf clubs in my garage. So one item that you can use is a putt, a putter, right here. I had one, so I can use this. This is the best thing that you can probably use. But most of you probably don't have one of these. So this is where we get creative. And I know you kids are very creative. So here's another idea. I ran into this at my house. It's, what is this called? A dustpan. A dustpan. This is <laughs> called a dustpan. And I found uh, one of my dogs golf balls it's really small so this is perfect so I got a ball and I've got a dustpan and what I'm going to do is check this out this is pretty cool so I'm going to try to take this handle off of the dustpan apparently it does not unscrew so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find a broomstick somewhere that I can unscrew and see if that works. I thought this was gonna work, but obviously it's not. So give me a minute, I'll try to find a broomstick. All right. So I was able to find this du other dustpan, and in the dustpan, there's a small broom. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not, I mean, I could use this dustpan also. I'm gonna keep this for a minute. You're gonna see how cool this is gonna be when you're creative. So first thing is, I found this little broom. Some brooms, they unscrew. This one does not unscrew, so I'm trying to figure out what am I gonna do? Well, Tatiana, she got creative and she gave me an idea. She said, turn it around. So I can turn this around like this and I can use 
this right here. So I'm going to use this as my implement and cool. The cool thing is I'm going to use the dustpan as my target. So when I'm ready to putt, I'm going to aim at this dustpan. All right. All right, so I'm going to use this little broom and I'm going to use it upside down. This is going to be the part that I'm going to be striking with. Now we have a ball, so we're going to go over the cues real quick. First cue, grip with your hands together and your thumbs pointing down like this. Not like this, we're not sweeping the floor. This is how we sweep the floor, we don't want to do this. We want to turn our hands so our thumbs are pointing down and our hands are together. Now the ball is right here, so first part, grip with your hands together, thumbs pointing down. Next thing, legs A, arms Y. Legs look like a letter A. My arms and my, and my golf club look like a letter Y. So legs A, arms Y. Third cue, dot the I. Now the dot, the I means with our golf clubs at school, we have a little bullseye on them that we want to align with the ball right there. So that's what that means. But we can also make it means, dot the I means put your eyes on the ball. Dot the I, eyes on the ball. And then the last and fourth, fourth and last cue would be Y putt Y. Y means backswing with your arms straight, elbows locked. So we backswing, we strike the ball, we follow through. Y putt Y. So it looks like this. Hands together, thumbs down. Legs A, arms Y. Dot the I, eyes on the ball. Y putt Y. One. All right, so this is what I'm gonna use as my target. I'm gonna use the dustpan on my broom as a target. Look, I have this dustpan and I have this dustpan. Now, I'm, I kind of like this one, so I'm going to try this one first. I'll put this one away. And I'm going to take about maybe, if you're a first or second grader, take like one, two, three steps away from the target. If you're a third, fourth grader, you can take like five steps. If you're a fifth grader, take six steps away from your target. We're going to start close. So I'm going to thumbs down, hands together. Legs A, arms Y. Dot the I. Y, putt Y. Follow through. I missed. So I'm going to try again. That's zero out of one try. All right, legs A, arms Y, dot the I, Y, putt, Y. I made that one. That's one out of two tries. I'm gonna try again. Legs A, arms Y, dot the I, Y, putt, Y. One out of three. Y put Y. Oops. One, one out of four. <laughs> and my last chance. <laughs> one out of five. So, as you notice, I did not get three out of five. So what do I need to do? I need to keep trying until I get it all right. I can, until I get three out of five. So I'm going to start all over again. Because I am not left-handed, I'm going to go this way. Because Mr. B is right-handed. So I just wanted you to be able to see. So I'm going to put my target on this side. And I'm going to try with my right side. So legs A, arms wide, dot the I. 
y put y. That's one out of one. Come back here. Legs A, arms Y, dot the I, elbows locked, Y, put Y. That's two out of two. Legs A, arms Y, dot the I, Y, put Y. Three out of three. I know I've already met the goal, but I want to try to see if I can get five out of five. So, four out of four. Five out of five. So I met the goal, I got five out of five. If I want to keep doing it, see if I can get 10 out of 10. But as long as you get three out of five or six out of 10, if you wanna keep going, you've met the goal. Once you get that goal completed, I need you to email me, tell me you met the goal, and I'll give you credit. Three. All right, boys and girls, that's the uh, conclusion of our first lesson in striking with implements. Striking with a putter, we are putting. Remember, putting is when you strike the ball so the ball stays on the ground toward the intended target, which is a golf hole. We can be creative and make a golf hole like I just did with the uh, dust pans and with the broomstick, okay? Any stick that's short, not too long, you can use. Um, remember, four cues, grip, hands together, thumbs down. Legs A, arms Y, cue number three, dot the I, looking down at the ball, and then Y, putt, Y. Backswing, strike, follow through. Remember that your assignment is going to be to give me, answer the two questions right here. If Tatiana, you can zoom into the question. What does the first Y do for your swing? In what way are you going to benefit by doing your back swing? Y, back swing. What is that gonna do for your strike? And then question number two is, what does the second Y do for your swing? When you follow through, Y, put, Y, the second Y, what does that do for your swing? Two questions, I want them in an email. Email me on EDSB so I can give you credit for that, uh, for you using your, your brain. Um, the second assignment that you're going to do every single day is I want you to turn on your favorite TV show and we're going to get our bodies moving because like I said earlier, a body that stays in motion or a body that, I forgot. A body, body that, that is, in, is motion. in motion stays in motion. motion. <laughs> so we have to get moving every day. So what we're going to do, including myself, every day we're going to get in front of our TV, which is cool, it's fun. Put on your favorite TV show for 30 minutes. Any show you want at any time of the day for 30 minutes. And you're either going to... Pretend you're jumping rope. You're gonna do jump rope until the show ends, or you're going to jog in place until the show ends. Um, that is our cardio respiratory endurance activity for the week right now. So as an assignment, every day, I need you to log in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday on a piece of paper. Put a check mark. If you did it on Monday, put a check mark if you did it on Tuesday. On Friday, if you did it five times, one time each day for 30 minutes, doing your cardiorespiratory endurance of jogging in place or imaginary jump rope, at the end of the week, I want you to take a picture of your log and I want you to attach it to an email on Edsby. If you cannot attach it to an email on Edsby, then I want you to write down, Mr. V, 
I have completed five runs or jump ropes for 30 minutes every day of this week, five days a week. Now, 30 minutes is really not enough because children should be playing and exercising for 60 minutes every day, seven days a week. So, if you want extra credit, I want you to follow that guideline. I will give you extra credit. So, if you can do 60 minutes every day, seven days a week, I want you to email me on Edsby and say, Mr. V, I didn't just do five days, 30 minutes. I did seven days for 60 minutes every day. So if you want to do 30 minutes running and 30 minutes jumping rope, that's cool. Or if you want to go and play in your backyard for 30 minutes and then go watch TV and run in place for 30 minutes or jump rope for 30 minutes, that's cool. As long as it adds up to 60 minutes, you're good with me. All right? So two assignments, your thinking question and your exercises at the end of the week. It's due on Friday. Your thinking question is due right after you do the activity. So once you do your swings and you met your goal, getting three, to, three out of five or six out of 10, then you're going to say, Mr. V, this is the answer to my two questions. You're gonna email me on Etsby and give me your answer. And then your second one is to get your body moving for 60 minutes a day, seven days a week, or if you prefer 30 minutes, five days a week, that's fine with me, okay? All right, boys and girls, I will see you next time for lesson number two.